Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, video series where we'll have short interviews about different topics with a PhD. He is. Uh, we did bachelor's in the same university. He was one year uh, junior to me, yep. and we had. Uh, in India and then we, we came to, uh, I came to Netherlands, he came to Germany yep. and if you have been watching, I'm, I'm living in Netherlands for more than four years until now and he finished his masters in Germany uh, in the field of mechanical engineering, uh, he will talk about it later and then he, sw he went to uh, France to start his PhD which is a joint PhD program between France and Belgium so that's why I thought he will be he will be sharing a lot of experiences about his masters in Germany and also uh, through this mini series of three four videos and also about the PhD application process and experiences of applying to PhD in different European countries like France Belgium and Germany so let's jump into the first topic of our discussion that is the what process do you follow or how what overview can you give about the internship the the job search and the thesis uh, as a whole uh, in during your masters in germany okay uh yeah. So, so before before going into how to apply for something like job or in thesis, so let's start with the thesis and the internship part. Mm -hmm. So before before going into the details, let's start uh, let's start with how does this framework works okay. uh, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So how does the internship or thesis work? So first of all, wh whoever is applying for masters uh, in Germany then uh, they would know that there are two types of universities like University of Applied Sciences and Technical University. So in those uh, areas you have normally the three semester or four semester master studies. Okay. So when you have a four semester master studies then you probably will have a compulsory internship. So when you have a compulsory internship you can apply to the companies and the companies are obliged to take you uh, means okay. that you have to, they, uh, they are obliged to consider your application for mm -hmm. an internship. Because if it is a voluntary internship, like you want to do by yourself and it's not prescribed in your course, you can still do it, but uh, it's always always the preference. The preference is always given to uh, the one who is having a compulsory internship. So basically okay. four semesters one. But I have seen people getting internships even from uh, university, uh, university of Applied Sciences. Me myself have also done an internship <coughs> and so I was also eligible for getting one so it all depends on the luck if you your counterparts or your other participants if they are also from university of applied sciences and they are not that good mm -hmm. like you then uh, you have always a strong chance uh, of so as compared to job the chance of getting internship is much higher just abstractly yeah yeah, yeah yeah exactly if you if you want to see <laughs> overally then obviously the app number of applications for internships uh, will be less comparatively mm -hmm. rather than the job so it's Internships okay. are getting uh, so you to get an internship. It's very easy not very easy, but yeah comparatively very easy So first we'll see about uh, the procedures of okay. uh, doing it. So before uh, so I don't want to give the website names Yeah, now. yeah. So, so, yeah. so we'll put all these things below in the description sure. You can check it and you can also contact him. I'll put the description of his LinkedIn profile yeah. Everything below so don't worry about it and he'll he's always open and I can I can to yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. depending on your time yeah. and busy schedule. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, so the websites that will be given in the description can be used for applications for your internships and thesis. So basically, the thesis in Germany lasts for twenty-two weeks. Okay. So, which is a five and a half months duration. Approximately, yeah. Approximately okay. five and a half. Sometimes people do it for six months, mm -hmm. but it is prescribed to have twenty-two weeks and uh, it carries uh, 30 credit points ECTS okay. and and that is same for both applied science and research yeah, yeah, universities yeah. it okay. will it will it, it is the common one okay it is the common one and till now until now i haven't seen any master thesis uh, master course where there is no thesis mm -hmm. which is so common in us uh, okay. yeah 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 if they you do see low pt or industrial yeah, something yeah. yeah something like that and when you do a thesis or an internship you always try to do it in a research organization or in a company mm -hmm. So what is the plus point? The plus point is that if you do in a company, 
then the internships and the thesis is counted as a work experience okay so for example if you worked like um six months internship and let's say six months of around about six months of thesis then you can write as a one year experience in your mm-hmm. cv while okay. applying for jobs so this is the plus point otherwise you can al- always do a thesis in um, universities or in research institutes and uh, this will have no impact on the grades mm-hmm. so the grades is basically solely depend on your work okay. your, your thesis work mm-hmm. and it's not depend on the location where you do okay. it is absolutely not uh, a criteria mm-hmm. for judging your thesis so yes so what is the procedure of applying a job a thesis or an internship the procedure always remains the same so the first thing first is the cover letter so mm-hmm. you have to write a cover letter so how does a cover letter works is basically the first document of your application document file so it says a bit about you mm-hmm. why you are interested in this position and how your present skills and competencies are rela- uh, relatable to the job advertisement so one has to write only one page of cover letter mm-hmm. try not to fit in the things that you are planning to write it in your resume or cv mm-hmm. so don't try don't to fit uh, yeah don't try to repeat it try to make because this is probably the first application that uh, first application document that the hr or the whoever is concerned for your application sees it mm-hmm. so it's the first impression as you know so the first impression yeah. should be the best impression yeah. that's that's how it works and uh, there are certain people i have seen uh, having an experience saying that uh, they probably see the cv first but it is always a 50 50 chance so it's always good to have a very good cover letter mm-hmm. many of the people copy what they write it in the cv so it's like you are repeating it so you're losing an opportunity uh, to create your mark uh, in the selector okay. minds mm-hmm. so this is the first thing you have to do is the cover letter then second comes the cv okay cv or resume they can ask anything mm-hmm. maybe uh, we can put our sample resume in the description yeah, exactly. so they can have a look and exactly. maybe make separate video later like later yeah sure. the, the yeah, details yeah. of the cv and yes. the format i think the format is max 2 pages two in pages Europe, yeah right? they they recommend it as two pages and sometimes it is strictly two pages okay. and sometimes they are like okay you submit your cv so when they say you submit your cv it's always recommended to have a two page cv okay. not more than that mm-hmm. so it should be precise not lengthy try to fit in the important points don't try to write everything so i have seen people giving uh, applying for the positions using the same cv no mm-hmm. you have to uh, optimize yeah, your yeah, cv yeah. i would according say according to the uh, position requirements. requirements skills you don't need to put every skills mm-hmm. whatever skills is required for the job you need to do that okay. so when you read a job ad- advertisement it's always good to, to highlight say, those skills. yeah to highlight those skills and keep it or keep a note of it and try to connect with what the skills you have and how you can demonstrate it mm-hmm. so it's so. always important for you to demonstrate your skills because before going for an interview the the selector needs to be convinced that this guy can be or this girl can be a good candidate for a particular position mm-hmm. so it's always important so this is how it works and then th- normally they will ask you about your bachelor study transcripts of record mm-hmm. your break- grades generally and the subjects you have studied and also your masters uh, subjects and the the grades so sometimes what happens is that in germany that uh, you won't be having enough credits to start your thesis so okay. actually the rule in germany uh, to have, have yeah mm-hmm. the rule in germany is that you need to have at least 60 credit points sorry 45 credit points uh, in order to start your thesis, thesis and 60 credit points before you defend your thesis okay so this is generally the rule but sometimes it is little bit flexible so that because it so happens that some examinations are it's it's not like you go and write it on a paper or something it's like a continuous evaluation mm-hmm. it can be like research seminars you have to attend seminars or you have to present posters uh, in conferences uh, university conferences so this can be the case and in that case it takes time for evaluation mm-hmm. so it's always flexible not to be worried about that but one has to make sure that he or she completes all the credit points before at least before defending the thesis okay because if you have done it then you have no load left and you have just defend your thesis and complete your master's course mm. so after the applications so after the applications the only thing is to wait for the results right mm. but some, uh, sometimes you won't receive a mail from them mm. many a times it happened with me 
So it's always difficult to know what's the status of your application. So in that case, it's always a rule of thumb, I would say, is to wait for two to three weeks after the deadline date and then Maybe ask, them. ask them. And it's always good to call them. Mm -hmm. Even if you write a mail, I, I guess you should receive a, uh, yeah, it's a bit slow, but you need to, uh, if you want it fast, mm -hmm. you can just call them and ask them what's the status of your applications. They And they are, the Germans are really straightforward. If it is a yes, they will say a yes. If it's a no, they will say no. Okay. So according to my experience, if it's a no already and they have not sent you a reject letter, so this is a rule that you should be having a reject letter from a particular positions if you are not selected. Mm. But if you don't have one and they will just say, okay, so we already rejected your applications and you can get it, get the rejection mail like in the next week or something like that. Okay. And uh, is the LinkedIn, LinkedIn is also important in when you apply for jobs in Germany or yeah, so it's not that effective. So, so, so in Germany, there are two uh, professional websites mm -hmm. or networking websites. So one is LinkedIn. The another one is Zing. Okay. So you uh, many of the, in the description, the exact link. Yeah. So Zing is also a link, uh, LinkedIn like platform and basic, very intensively used by Ge Germans. Germans. Okay. Yeah. And you can use that platform to find jobs, to contact or to network the like you do it on LinkedIn. But it's very important for someone to have a LinkedIn account because you can reach to people all uh, over Europe, all over Europe, or no, all over the world. Oh, and yeah, you that's can, true. Yeah, all over the world, and uh, you can know that who is doing which project. We can you can start building the network, and it can so happen that you can have an informal interview. And then you can get selected for a job or maybe a thesis or maybe an internship and mm -hmm. you never know whom you're talking to yeah, yeah. and uh, what opportunities are there for uh, hereafter. So it's always good to good to know uh, that which people are working in your area and your field. So this is basically how the procedure works. So once you're getting selected, you will be called for an interview. So generally there are two rounds of interview. One is a telephonic interview and the next one uh, is a be a personal interview so you have to go to the company or to the institute uh, for the interview for the personal interview so if you pass the phone interview only you are called for this thing sometimes it can be a skype interview so it all depends on the company okay and maybe they can bypass this telephonic or skype interview and can directly call you for the interview personal interview mm -hmm. so this can so happen but there will be an interview for sure okay there will be an interview and uh, after the interview, it, they normally take two weeks to give you the final result. Okay. And in, that's that's how it works. That's how it works. Okay. Do smash the like button if you like this video. Don't forget to share this video among your friends. And subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. So that you keep getting this content about studying and living in Europe, Netherlands, Germany, Belgium and other places. Yep. Thank you very much. So, till next video. See you. Bye-bye. Peace out.